Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm recording. I'm gonna. I want to focus this year on something specifically. I, w- I would say it's unique, but it's not fair to call it unique because it does happen sometimes. But I would say something unusual about this year. What is it that it falls out on Saturday night? Why is that unusual? Well, let me ask you. What are the differences? Feel free to unmute and shout at me. What are the differences? What's unusual? What's unique-ish about the fact that Pesach falls starts on a Saturday night? Motzei Shabbos. Anyone? Go on. Wow! Look at that. I floored you all. David, you're muted. A uh, burn, uh, burning of chametz yeah. is a challenge. Uh, fast of the firstborn shifts. Right. Good. Okay. That, that, I'm not going to hog everything. Yeah, yeah, okay. Nine-day nine festival. It's a nine-day festival. I like that. Let's think very much. What was that, uh, Judy? No, you can't prepare for Yontel on Shabbos, so you've got to do everything on. Oh, you can't prepare for Yontel on Shabbos. What are the... Is it, okay, I was going to say, what are the benefits? Is that a benefit? Well, as long as you remember everything beforehand. Okay. Oh, but you've got to remember everything. Truthfully, it's like that every year. There's always stuff you've always got to remember. Um, before Shabbos or Yontem. It's actually a four day because you've got to be organised for what you're going to eat for Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. And then the days that follow as well. So it's a a great busy (laughs) Julia, are you wanting to add something? Yes, I think it's I think it's, I like it when it's Shabbat because I know that you've got to have a lot of pre-preparation but it does mean on Shabbat you're forced to have a rest you can't do anything, and I think that's wonderful. I think that you know. I see you in shul at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, I just think it's. I think it's nice. I otherwise, I know in previous years I'm working right up until the until the seder, and I feel very tired. Whereas when it's on a Shabbat, not say Shabbat, at least you've had a chance to have a rest. Well, I. Me too. Oh. There you go, David as well. I wholeheartedly agree with you, Julia. I often, maybe it's different with the second Sadaram that we've been doing with like 150 people, but often, would growing up at least, or, or I'd often enjoy second night more because you've had a bit of a, a quiet day leading up to it. Whereas, as you quite rightly say, the day of it Erev frozen? Pesach, oh, it's frozen. between the burning and the running around and the last minute fish order and realising you've run out of eggs and then there's whatever you, whatever normally happens on Erev Pesach, rush, 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 and you kind of fall into Pesach and worry about the food and this and that. And then it's like the Seder's here. Like, oh, so one benefit is that a little bit more relaxing. Another benefit is going into a bit more halakhic stuff, thinking about, about sort of more outside the box. Um, it's called Shabbat Haggadol, this Shabbos. It would have been last Shabbos, but it's called this Shabbos. This Shabbos is called Shabbat Haggadol. What's, uh, what's one of the objectives of Shabbat Haggadol, the great Shabbat? What are we supposed to do? On Shabbat afternoon, we are supposed to read the Haggadah. So the Shabbos before Pesach, he's supposed to kind of prepare for Pesach itself by reading Haggadah. What usually happens is, minute Shabbos afternoon, you go, right. Mario of Motsu Shabbos, go, everyone goes home to get back to their Pesach preparations. This year, the Shabbos afternoon of Shabbat HaGadol falls out in an afternoon where there really is very little else to do. <laughs> can't eat very much, can't do very much. You've done about all the sleep you can get out of the day. Therefore, you've got a nice long afternoon to prepare for Pesach. The other thing I like about it falling out like this is because... One of the things that we do, you know, we've got young kids, as you know, and we, every year you're trying to like think of different things and questions and, and, and challenge them. So why do we dip and why do we say to play? And as the kids get older, they know all the answers. Whereas this year, we're going to throw a few different things into the pot about different times to burn the chametz and different times to eat and sure. So there are what I would call benefits, differences, yes, challenges, but things that we can a- a- approach this year with Okay, a little bit more confusion in some respect, but also opportunity, let's call it. There's one other aspect this year that I would like to focus on that I don't think I've ever spoken about before, and it's not something that's often spoken about before, but there's an opportunity for us to discuss it. If I was to say the words in Hebrew, Neshama Yeseira, or in a slightly less Ashkenazi way, Neshama Yeteira, does anyone know what I'm referring to? 
Have a guess. Judy's trying to wave at me. <laughs> the, the additional oh, soul. Higher um, spiritual level or? Okay. Oh, so 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 almost Judy. I think Graham just about said it. Graham, what was that said again? Um, the additional soul oh. one is bequeathed on Shabbat. Oh, I think it's a bequeathed. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I check. I heard you right. So 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 thank you, Rabina Graham, who would who's offering the Nashama Yasera this extra. I'm putting in speech marks. This extra soul that we get on Shabbos. Right, why is that relevant to this year? Because the, when does the extra soul that we get on Shabbos leave? And we're going to look at this in a second. When does it leave? After Shabbos. Okay. Logic, if you get it on Shabbos, it leaves after Shabbos. What halachic process do we have that signifies that it's gone? Anyone know? In Havdalah. Havdalah. Alan, is that, was that you? Alan, what do we do in Havdalah? Havdalah. What so spe what special things do we do in Havdalah that signifies? Huh? Yeah, no, it's Basomim. No, I oh, don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, Alan. Did you? Yeah, you got it right. Spicy. Look at that. Spicy. You don't look so shocked. You got it right. <laughs> when we smell the spices at Havdalah, be careful what you say, as it looks like God is. I don't understand what they. Um, um, <laughs> Um, sorry, I think that's someone that's initials are GD. David, you can't send me texts during this. <laughs> I can't multitask. I have to stop what I'm saying to read what you've said to me, and then I have to work up what you to me, and I've completely forgot what I was saying. <laughs> it's not. Basamin. Thank you very much. Basamin. When we smell the spices at Tavdal, or I'm not saying Shabbat, that is to arouse us, uh, to, uh, to help us, not arouse, to, to help us to kind of revive us. That's the word I'm looking Revive us in that feeling that something has been lost. And we you know that smelling salts, right? So, oh, wow. That, so that's one of the reasons that we smell spices after Shabbat goes out, because this neshama has gone. Where does this come from, right? Uh, by the way, I am getting to a point, but we're going to learn a little bit about this neshama Yisera and explain it in, the, in relation and context to Pesach. So let me share my screen. If you, this is basically what we sent out this morning, but if you didn't print it out, do not fear. We're looking at it now. There is a, just in case you thought it was made up. By the way, in terms of what it is, some people say, well, let's, 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 see, let's see what the Gemara says. So the Gemara says as follows. The Amar of Bishim ben Lakish says Reish Lakish in the Gemara. Neshama Yaseira, this extra soul. This isn't some made up um, hocus pocus. This is a real thing that the Gemara discusses. Naisei Nekadosh Baruch Hu, Ba'adam... Erev Shabbos. Before Shabbos comes in, God gives man, i.e. us, the Neshama Yeseira. This extra soul. Let's just translate it like that for now. And after Shabbos goes out, it gets taken away. What does the verse say? Shavas Let's look at the verse. You should recognize this from Shabbos, from Kiddush. Between me and the people of Israel, says God. There shall be an eternal sign, an ice, an eternal sign. It's because for seven day, six days, God created the heavens and the earth. But on the seventh day, it's a very familiar verse to us. On the seventh day, God rested. Now, we've learned that since very, very young age, that on the six days, God creates heaven and the earth. On the seventh day, God rests. Now, the Gemara is very bothered by something. What is it bothered by? God doesn't rest. God is not a person. God is not a man. God is an infinite presence. And there should be no concept of God resting. However, we refer to God as resting. By virtue of the fact the Pasuk says, Shabbat on Shabbat, Vayinofash, and he rested. So the Gemara says, don't read it, Vayinofash, and he rested. Read it, Kevan says Shabbat, Shabbat, not Vayinofash, but Vay, wow, of the Nefesh, the soul was lost. Vay Nofash, the soul was lost. That's is how the Gemara wants to understand that verse. So when Shabbos comes about, says the Gemara, 
we get this extra soul. When Shabbos leaves, the soul goes away. Now, when does the soul come? That's Taka, a good question. Various different options given to us. The Shulchan Aruch, by the way, says here, right, when it comes to the prayers on an air of Shabbat before Shabbos comes in, or as Shabbos comes in, what's the right timing? When can you pray? So he says, really, that when it comes to the evening services, i.e. Kabbalat Shabbat, you can start that a bit earlier than you might do the evening services for the rest of the week. Halfway through the afternoon, says the Shulchan Aruch, says the great halachic writing, that from the middle of the afternoon on a Friday already, a person can bring in Shabbat, which is what we do especially throughout the summer. We have like a weekly time in the summer, 7.20, 7.30, whatever it is, that we bring Shabbos in as a community. We can light candles. And what do we do? We light candles. We go home. We have our Shabbos meal. It's still broad daylight outside, but we can do that. Why? Because the Shulchan Aruch says, quoting Halakha and understanding, that you could already bring Shabbos in and eat and drink as if it's Shabbos already from the middle of the afternoon. So some of the authorities want to say, because we can bring Shabbos in before it's actually Shabbos and treat it like Shabbat, by virtue of that fact, it's when we pray, whatever that is, however early that might be, whatever time of the year, when we say the prayers of Shabbat, that is when this neshama yaseira, this, this extra soul, comes and joins us. Others say, no, we're ready from midday on Shabbat, on Erev Shabbat, on Friday afternoon, ready that time where there's certain restrictions in place and certain preparations that we do for Shabbos, that's when the Nashama Yaseira comes in. I just want to say, no, it's got something to do with the Malachim. You know, we sing Shalom Aleichem. We sing Shalom Aleichem. Welcome, come with peace, come with blessings, come and bless us, leave in peace all the Shalom Aleichem brachas that we sing on Friday night, the Malachim, the angels that come and escort us home. That's when the extra Neshama, when the angels come into our home, that's when this extra Neshama comes. Well, finally, some say it's the pure Oineg, and eating and the delighting in Shabbos, when we create the atmosphere in our home, that is when the extra neshama rests. These are all very interesting and nice things. But what is the neshama Yaseira? I'm sure that is the question that is piercing you, piercing your brains now. Rabbi, what are you talking about neshama Yaseira? We've said there is one. We now know when it comes, or potentially the different options are when it comes. We know when it leaves, when Shabbos goes out, and we have to smell the spices as if to awaken us. But what is it? So let's briefly, and I say briefly because the shir isn't specifically about an Hashem Yaseira, but you're going to see why we're getting there in a few minutes. So there are various different options, and we're going to see a broad range. I'll give you three or four very brief options. But from one respect, we have the Rajba. The Rajba here, again, these are all medieval commentators for the most part here, commentating on the Torah, commentating on the Gemara. So let's, uh, let's see what he says. V'yeshma farashim, there are those that understand the neshama yaseira, da'ayna ha'manucha v'ha'oyneg sh'ha'nefesh moitzah ki'ilu ha'moitzah ki'ilu hi neshama yaseira. Says the Raj, but it's not some being or presence. He says, when a person gets into the Shabbat mood, the Shabbat atmosphere, when a person turns their phone off, puts their briefcase down, turns the computers off, closes off the weak stress activities and focuses on the joy, pleasure, manucha, simcha, family, whatever it might be, spirituality, whatever it is. When you focus on Shabbat, the soul rests. And that expression, that feeling is called the Neshama Yaseira. That's like having an extra soul. It's not actually a spiritual presence or being. It's just the feeling that one gets when one engages with the sanctity and holiness of Shamas. And when it leaves him, finishing in the English, and when it leaves him, when it, when it leaves a person on a Saturday night, I don't want to say Shabbos, he enters the days of strain and suffering. It is as though he has lost the extra soul and he is weakened. I remember being in a meeting a couple of years ago with someone on a Sunday evening and uh, I'll never forget this person turning to me and said, I hate Sunday nights. And he, I said to him, okay, like, what's so bad about it? So you've had a nice weekend. Well, he said, I, I dread Sunday nights. He said, because 
because I know when I go to bed, I've got to wake up and I've got to go back to work. And it just hit me that, you know, Baruch Hashem, I don't, I don't have that in, in, in my line of work, in my career path and in what we do. We, you know, we, 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 uh, we don't have that attitude, thank God. And I have a lot of respect and love for this particular person that always reminds me that he says this, you know, he, it's not that even he hates his job. He's just, there's something special about Shabbos, about the weekend. And when he has to face the what's going on in the rest of the week, it's just working his way up to get to Shabbos. So that's one idea, says the Rashba. Rashi, based on that Gemara that we saw, says something totally different. It's a bit, a bit strange, a bit difficult to understand what Rashi's saying. I'll just say it in the English quickly. He says, what is this Neshama Yaseva? The breadth of spirit for rest and joy. And to be open wide is a kind of a loose translation of what he's saying. A person will eat and drink and his spirit will not be revolted. Says Rashi that a person throughout Shabbat will also enjoy the physical realities of the world by eating and drinking, enjoying and having simcha and embracing, yes, the sanctity of the day and the holiness of the day and the, and, and the simcha of the day, but also like be able to have lachayims and oinik shabbos and extra food. And, and yet, even with all these extra physical uh, physical options, these physical extras that we do in the day, even with all those things, our souls will not be affected. So if you have a few lachams on Shabbos, no, that's not as if someone is going about doing that on an average day. It's very special to do on Shabbos. I think this is where the myth, the Bubba Maisa says that you can't put weight on on Shabbos because you're enjoying and all the Shabbos foods and the Kiddush and the lachams and the herring and the kichel or whatever it is. And I think that it, it, I think it's right, by the way, don't put the weight on Shabbos. It just sits above you until you blow out the candle or have done and then it kind of just falls. But there you go. So maybe that maybe it's coming from this Rashi. OK, another idea of the Ibn Ezra says, no, that God sanctified this day and prepared it, i.e. the day of Shabbat, as a day for souls to receive extra wisdom, says the Ibn Ezra. It's not about eating and enjoying and the Oineg and Simcha of Shabbos. The Neshama, you say with this extra Neshama, it's actually allows a person to receive the opportunity for wisdom. So when we sit and we learn Torah on a daily basis, it's, it's gewaldic, it's beautiful. But when we sit in learn Torah on a Shabbat, when we, when we open our eyes and our mind and our hearts on Shabbat, there's a neshama yaseva, there's an extra presence about us that helps us to acquire, and receive extra insights, wisdom and understanding. There's a few ideas like this. Then the Ramban takes it a whole stage further. And he says, no, he says the Shabbat, Neshama Yisera, this extra soul on Shabbat, he says here, is the extra soul which comes from the very essence and the foundations of the world, in whose hand are the souls of all who live, quoting from Eov. Meaning there is a Neshama, an extra Neshama, an extra part of a person that is given, extended to us on Shabbos, that physically and spiritually comes, attaches itself to us, and then leaves straight after. So really, I've just brought you three or four different understandings of what the Shina Shaman Yisera is. You either go from sort of the rational approach, which is, no, it's just the feeling one gets by engaging in the sanctity of Shabbos, all the way through to the Rambam, which is actually, no, this is actually an actual soul. If one can imagine such a thing, it's very difficult for us to imagine because it's a spiritual existence that we're not in touch with so much. But we believe there is an neshama and a guf, a soul and a body, and that we are made up and our essence is our neshama, but we're housed in a guf, we're housed in this body. And if we can imagine that, we can imagine maybe there's an extra side to us that we get on Shabbat. These are all very, very well, but what's that got to do with the price of matzah? So far, nothing necessarily, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Just two practical ramifications for us to understand. So it's all very well we're talking about Neshama Yisera. Does it carry out itself in Halacha, practically for us on a normal Shabbos? Well, we've said the Basamim at Havdala, the spices at Havdala, represents this Neshama going. And whichever way you look at it, you can relate to that. Whether you look at it as just the sanctity and rest of Shabbos, I don't know about you, but especially in the winter Shabbos, where Saturday night is a very long evening, there's a lot, you can have a whole work day on that Saturday night. So as soon as you've blown out that candle, the spices are gone, you're back into the normal world. So whatever it is, however we engage with the Neshama Yaseira, it leaves after Shabbos goes out. The other very practical thing, 
taking this from left field, but it's a practical one. Anyone ever made Sheva Brachot or been to Sheva Brachot on a Shabbos? Right, so a couple gets married, and for the seven days after their uh, for seven days after their wedding, it's traditional that we we gather together and we have extra meals, known as the Sheva Brachot and the Sheva Brachot that we say out of the chuppah. We say at each, we say each one of those days, each one of those meals with the bride and groom with the minyan, and each one of those meals that we have Sheva Brachot in the week that follows the wedding, halachically you need what is called panim chadashot. You need a new person, someone that was not at the chuppah, someone that has not heard the Sheva Brachot for this couple, in order to be able to say the Sheva Brachot. And that's halacha. Except on Shabbos, if you've made Sheva Brachot, or been to Sheva Brachot on a Shabbat, you don't need the Panim Chadashot. Why? Because Shabbos is an ice. Shabbos is a sign. We have an Ashama say we have an extra soul. That means that we already have that extra new person in the idea that we bring an extra presence, an extra neshama to the Shabbos table, to the Shabbos atmosphere, to the Shabbos house. And therefore, practically speaking, you don't need an extra physical person because Shabbos brings with it an extra spiritual presence. Right. Again, what's this going to do with Pesach? So let me ask you a different question. Let's just see if anyone is still with me because I've been looking at my screen and not you. Right. Let me ask you a question. I've just said everything about an Ashama Yusei, extra soul on Shabbos. Does this apply to the Chagim? Does it apply to Yontuf? Based on what we said, come on, people, think. What was the reason the Gemara said that we have an Ashama Yusei? How do we know? Where does it come from? Go on, Salvador, I saw you talking, unless you're talking about the football. I'm just picking on you, I'm sorry. You don't have to answer. Anyone else? Because it's, the six says the seven the seven days the neshama came, came down. Oh, because on Shabbos, right? It comes on the Shabbos, says the Gemara, right? Says Salvador. Thank you very much. On Shabbos is the day that God rests, and therefore the Gemara says the vayin of ash. Whoa, the soul leaves after Shabbat. Well, Yontif is a Shabbos. Excellent, right? Any other reason that would think is a Shabbos? So, yeah, you go on, Judy. I have a question. Was the um, when when they actually left Mitzrayim, was it straight? Do we know? Was it straight after Shabbat or what day of the week Shabbos. was it? No, so the, the actual it's a good question. The 10th of Nissan was a Shabbat in that year, they left on a Thursday. Oh, okay. Okay, I like it's where point, we, really, I like isn't it? You would have gone with that, but <laughs> our wives would say Pesach isn't much of a rest. <laughs> Your wives would say Pesach. Oh, excellent. Okay, very good. One second. So, based on what we've said already, is your gut telling you that we do not have an Ashama Yisera on Yontif? Prove it to me from Halacha. I'll prove it to you. Right? When did we say the Ashama Yisera leaves? After Shabbos goes out, and how do we signify it? By spelling, smelling the spices. Havdalah for a yontuf. What do we not do? Right? We don't do the candle, because, again, we only make a bracha on a, on a flame either after Yom Kippur or after Shabbat, because that's when God created fire. He created fire on a Motzei Shabbat, so we make the bracha on a Motzei Shabbat. And then why do we smell the spices? Because the Neshama Yaseira, this extra Neshama, leaves us. We do not make the bracha, says Salvador through the screen. We do not make the bracha on the spices after Yontif. So now I've proven to you, because by virtue of the fact that we don't make that bracha after Yontif goes out, must mean there is no Neshama Yaseira after Yontif. Or on Yontif, sorry. Fair enough? No, David, David then is not convinced. Anna Winthrop's was relatively convinced. Others would like to suggest one second. The whole purpose of an Ashami Yaseira is to add the extra spirituality and the extra whatever, however you want to look at it, for a Shabbos. We've definitely learned it by Shabbos, but Yontav is different because there are things we can do on Yontav that we can't do on Shabbos, i.e. cook, i.e. carry. So it's not a total day of sanctity, like it's not a total day of rest like Shabbos is. There are differences within Yontav from Shabbos that might mean that Neshama Yaseira doesn't apply. However, now we're going to come in to what happens on Saturday night. Here's another challenge for you. This is where you will need a Machsa or a Hagada. What is the order of blessings when Shabbos goes out when we start the Seder? 
Now, on a normal year, it's hard enough to get this right. On a normal Shabbos, it's hard enough to get this right. On Yontav, it's hard enough. But when Yontav starts, when Shabbos goes out, there's a Gemara that gives you a nice little code. Yaknas. Yayin Kiddush. Yayin Kiddush Ne'er Havdalah Zman. Let me explain. So when Shabbos goes out and you're standing at your Seder table ready to make all the brachas and you're holding a cup of wine, you start with the bracha of Boirei Pri Hagafa. David Lerner's gone to check this out in the Haggadah, probably, because... And I hope he has. Because, yeah, he's got his vet at the Abarbanel, not just any Haggadah, the Abarbanel Haggadah. Thanks, David. But check that I'm right, please, hopefully. Bezat Hashem. You start with Kiddush, right? You're holding Boi Rei Pri Hagafen. Then you make the bracha of, on the Zman, on the time, right? You make the bracha of, Dave, you got it there in front of you? Yeah. So they're the first two brachas. After that, you make the bracha on Ha'esh, on the Ner, Yes, David? He's still finding the page. Oh, you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so far. Perfect. Then you make the bracha of Hamavda ben Kodesh Dachol, which is, so those two are from Havdala. And then you make the bracha of Sheikh Yan on the Zman. Yes, um, have I got that right? Well, the Abarbanel says that in Spain they had a custom of sniffing whatever was around. But without a bracha, right? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Okay, good. Baruch Hashem. I would have, like, no share left otherwise. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, so what's missing? The basamin. Oh, now, okay, get this. If we take this logic through, if we take the logic through, that after a normal Shabbos, you make the bracha of spices to signify the fact that Hashem is here as God, and then after a normal Yontif, you don't make it, which should prove to us that there is no Hashem is But when Shabbos goes into Yontif, you would expect to make the bracha of Basamim, because the Hashem is is gone. But it's, it doesn't exist. It's not in there. Right? It's missing. So it comes along many of our great sages and say this proves that there is an Ashama Yaseira on Yontif. Because otherwise you would have made the Basamim. But the fact that you don't, it means that the Shama Yaseira stays throughout the Yontif, through from Shabbos into Yontif. And you look at me going, so, and what, who cares, right? Okay, I'm getting there. Don't worry. Now, not everyone agrees with that, by the way. Some people say, no, you don't need to make the sweet-smelling bracha on a Shabbos that goes into Yontav because Yontav is sweet-smelling and it's beautiful and it's happy and that, that revives us. But there are those that would like to suggest. And this is the kicker. This is, this, is, this is the good one, right? There are those that would like to suggest, and I'm not making this up. This is from legitimate <laughs> Hoshiva, highly respected rabbinic sages, with extremely broad shoulders, but this is something very powerful and something very special, and I think really something I want to develop for five minutes that's going to take us in to change how we view not just Yontav, but how we view Pesach this year especially. There are those that would like to suggest the difference between the Neshami Yaseira on Shabbos and Yontav is that when Shabbos goes out, so does the Neshama, so does this extra spiritual, physical, whatever you want to look at it, this feeling goes. But when Yontaf goes out, we get to keep it. What do I mean? Right? How does everything we said flow? And again, however you yourselves as intelligent, thoughtful, learned friends, however you want to look at what I've said until now about what this Nashami Yaseira is, whichever opinion you like the best about whether it makes you wiser or it doesn't make you fat or it doesn't... Or, or it enhances us in a way in which we can enjoy Shabbos in a totally different way. Or it's a total break from the rest of the week. Whatever, however we're looking at it, whether it's the Ramban that actually is a physical, sorry, spiritual ex existence that is added to us to enhance and, and lift us for a Shabbos. However we want to look at it, it goes on a Shabbos, when Shabbos goes. But on Yom Tov, we have the opportunity to keep it. And what's the difference? The difference is, Shabbos is given to us, and Yontif we have to take for ourselves. What do I mean? God creates the world in six days, and he rests on Shabbos. What does it say? Says God, between me, God, and the Bnei Yisrael, I give to you Shabbos. It's yours. This is your opportunity to become holy. This is your opportunity to connect with me, your family, the world around you. This is a matana. This is a gift. Take it. Make it yours. Yontov's different. Yontov, we makadesh Yisrael. 
we, we sanctify Israel, Vazmanim, and the time. What does it mean, the time? It means that Yontav doesn't happen on its own. Yontav isn't a weekly thing that God gives us as a gift on a weekly basis. Yontav is something that we have to take responsibility for. Yontav is a thing that we have to sanctify ourselves. And why do I say that? Because if I was to ask you what date Pesach is, what are you going to tell me? It's the 15th of Nisan, correct? When's the 15th of Nisan? When we say it's the 15th of Nisan. Because how do we know when Nisan starts? Because we have to go up and look at the sky and look for the moon. Ah, we see the moon. Now we have to run to the Beth Din at the beginning of the month and say, we saw the moon, we saw the moon. And the Beth Din goes, you saw the moon, tell us about it. And they, 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 they inquire with the witnesses and they test them and they check them. And when the Beth Din is satisfied that they really did see the moon, they go, Mukdash, 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 we sanctify the, we sanctify the month. Now, today is Rosh Chodesh. Not tomorrow, not yet. Today. Why? Because they saw it. But if they didn't come to the Beth Din in time, if it's fallen over to another day, that's the next day's Rosh Chodesh. We have to take responsibility for the time. And by the way, how that plays out is immense. Because if you think about like Yom Kippur, for example, Yom Kippur, the Isurim, the prohibitions of eating Yom Kippur, we know are pretty, pretty up there, right? You know, with things not to do. Don't eat on Yom Kippur. But if we follow that logic, when it comes to Tishrei, if we get the day wrong, potentially we are we are falling into some of the greatest transgressions written in Torah, but God says, no, it's in your hands. You decide when Yom Kippur is. Not you decide because you want, you know, not leaving it up to, um, leaving it up to us to make purposeful mistakes, but you decide, i.e., you've got to go and look at the moon and you've got to decide, do you see it? Is it there? Is it not there? And you've got to go to the Beth and your Beth and have to take charge and you decide, is today Rosh Chodesh? Is it really legitimately there or not? You take that responsibility, unlike Shabbos. And we can extend this further. Many, many examples we can give. These ideas, by the way, if you're interested to know some of the sources for the ideas, really uh, the Shemish Shmuel, Rav Shmuel Bornstein, also known as the Sokotova Rebbe, lives in the 1900s. So he, he writes about this and he, he speaks about it beautifully, how the, the, the holiness that we create is greater than the holiness that is given to us. Think about the Luchot, he says. Think about the tablets of stone. Moshe Rabbeinu goes up to Mount Sinai after Ten Commandments are given. And God gives to him the tablets of stone, which God himself forges in the heavens. God creates the stones and God creates the writing on them, gives them to Moshe. Moshe goes down, smashes them. What happens after that? B'nai Yisrael do to Shufa, they repent. They now earn the second set. And the second set were the ones, even though we had the pieces from the first, the second ones that would stay intact, they were the ones, we don't know where they are now, but they are still shining, they're still glowing. Why? Because we created them. We created the opportunity for them because we did Teshuvah, we did repentance after what happened with the uh, sin of the golden calf, just as the parasha said not so long ago. And we could take it even one step further. And I'll finish having, uh, having this in mind. Two mountains, this was sort of Eichik. Two mountains are fundamental to our history and to our outlook on life. The mountain of Sinai and the mountain of Moriah in Yerushalayim. Mount Sinai, where we got the Torah, and Mount Moriah, where the Mishkan rested, where the tabernacle, where the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple, is rests. Two mountains. Where's Mount Sinai? We don't know, somewhere in the Egyptian deserts. Where's Har Moria? We know exactly where that is. We've all, I imagine most of us, have been to the Temple Mount, been to the Kotel, been to the Western Wall, spent time in the old city, staring in awe at the ruins of that great city. So, so Soloveitchik, why is it that the, the mountain where the Torah was given, that important, fundamental moment in Jewish history, really we should be flocking to that mountain to feel and connect with what happened there? No. It's almost insignificant. We have no idea where it is. We don't go there. We don't have package holidays to go travel around the mountain. It doesn't happen. But Har Maria, we do. What's the difference of sort of Egypt? Because Matan Torah, when God created the experiences in Mount Sinai, all we did was rock up. We had to be there. He gave them to us. That's holiness. But what's a greater holiness? Har Har Maria, the Mount of Maria. Because that's where we built the temple. That was our doing. That was our sweat, our hard work, our efforts. And that stays with us for longer. 
So now I'm going to bring it all together and tell you why I think this year gives us not a unique, but a uncommon opportunity to really engage with Pesach. Because whatever this Neshama Yaseira actually is for you, for us, however you look at it, whenever it really comes, or whenever it really goes, on a normal Shabbos, it comes and goes regardless of what we do because God gives it to us. But on a Yontaf, on a normal Yontaf, the Neshama Yaseira, that extra essence, that extra level, that extra presence that we have is dependent on the effort and the work that we put into it. And based on that effort that we put into it, we get to keep it afterwards. And that's why we don't need the Basamim after Yontaf. That's why we don't need the Basamim after Motei Shabbat. Because the efforts that we can put, and we all know, by the way, what effort Pesach is. Effort is cleaning cupboards. Effort is changing over. Effort is rolling cinnamon books. Effort is also about reading the Haggadah before Yontaf. And as I said at the beginning, we have an incredible opportunity this year to go into the Pesach Seder on the first night really prepared, really thought out, really engaged with this beautiful Shabbos afternoon. Please God the weather will be nice and we can sit in the garden or go for a walk, socially distance, whatever it might be. Agreed. But this year's a bit quieter than previous years. Not last year, but a bit quieter. We've got less people. We're interacting a lot less. We have a lot more time on our hands. And the unique, almost unique, uncommon opportunity that we have as Pesach comes from Shabbos. The Neshama Yaseira of Shabbos will come and go. But the Neshama Yaseira of Yontaf, if we make that effort on Shabbos, if we combine the opportunities of both the Neshama Yaseira, it's both extra souls, if we combine that opportunity with the hard work and the effort, really preparing, really engaging in the day, really resting, then we fall into Seder as different to changed people, people that are prepared, excited, willing to embrace, whether we're one or a few more because you've got that in your whatever circumstances you're in, whatever it might be. But if we can really use it properly, not only will it enhance our Seder, but we get to keep that feeling for as long as possible, even long after Yontav's gone, all the way to Shavuot, all the way to Matan Torah, where God gives us the precious gift of Torah, all the way through Sfirat Omer, the counting of the Omer. And if you haven't asked Lisa for your packs yet, or you want that your weekly downloads, the emails, in order to, again, to continue learning, to hold on and to keep that spiritual lift that we all need in life. Why are you all here tuned into a Zoom share on a quarter to nine, two days before Pesach? Because we all want to learn and grow. Because we all want to enhance our lives. It's there for the taking. If we continue to grow, we continue to use the opportunities given to us. Bezrat Hashem, it should always be a blessing. Siat Dishmai, help from heaven. Wisdom, sanctity, and lots of matzah. And that's my offering for this year's Shabbat Hagadol Shir. Any questions? <laughs> You're like, what's he talking about? <laughs> okay, well, I hope it made sense. I hope it was nice. It was interesting, a bit different from what I normally do. Um, um, okay. Great. Well, on that note, anyone that is fasting, no, that needs to fast but doesn't want to fast tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, there'll be a Zoom see them. Thank you to Graham for being with Siam tomorrow. And um, don't forget to be decapped chametz tomorrow night. Burn your chametz Friday morning. Check the guidelines for all the, de for all the details and um, be in touch if, if you need anything. Don't forget to sell your chametz if you haven't done so. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Like an eerie silence. Someone say something. Oh, incidentally, just something. Excellent. My bimitzvah was uh, just one thing. My bimitzvah was Shabbos Hagadol, so we had to wait two weeks for the party. But you know, it's better than waiting a year, which um, is happening <laughs> this year. Oh, <laughs> which show was that? Not uh, uh, Luton. 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 Yeah. That's Luton. the one. Luton. Luton Town. Anyway, a bit of useless. Thank you, is that worthy? Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you very much. And it was clear. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Very clear. Alan, this